Before you enter the NMR room to take an NMR spectra, make sure you take off your gloves. Before you start using the machine, make sure you sign in with the date, your name, the nucleus, so either H1 or C13, and what time it is. There are two programs that we use to take an NMR spectra. The first one, this one is PNMR. This is where you'll actually take your spectrum. Um, all commands that you type in will show up down here, so like that. And then to start a command, you want to hit enter. The other program is NUTS. This is NUTS. This is where you'll actually look at your spectrum and work it up. NUTS is a little bit different than PNMR. All the commands are two letters, and you don't have to hit enter to start them. So when you're ready to put your sample in the NMR, come over to the machine and lift up the lid. There's always a sample in the NMR, so you want to use this button over here to eject the sample. Slowly push in and it will rise out of the opening. You want to grab the upper part of the sample and then take a Kim wipe to take the bobbin off. You never want to touch the bobbin with your bare hands because you can get dirt and other particulates on it that will mess up the spinning. Put the water sample back where it belongs and then you can take your sample tube, insert it into the bobbin part of the way, and then use the gauge to push it down the rest of the way. All right. This gauge has a notch line in it. The notch means that this is where it actually takes the scan. As long as your sample is higher than the notch, you have enough. Last thing you want to do is wipe it all down really good before you put it in the machine to make sure there's no fingerprints interfering with your scan. And then you want to go ahead and press the, press the button again. Um, you should hear a whooshing sound. And you can go ahead and rest your sample in. It'll just stay like that. And then slowly release it. The last thing you want to do is check that your sample is spinning. So you'll notice on the bobbin, there's this sharpie mark. If you can see the sharpie mark, that means your sample is not spinning. If you can't see the mark, that means your sample is spinning. Okay. So I cannot see the sharpie mark, so our sample is spinning. So you're all set to take your scan. Once you've inserted your sample into the machine and made sure it's spinning, you want to come over to the computer and actually take your scan. Whenever you're taking a scan, the first thing you want to check is the nucleus. So in our case, we want to take a C13, so we want to make sure the nucleus says C13. If it didn't say C13, what you can do is type in NU space C13 and hit enter. After that, you want to check the number of scans. It'll automatically come up with 12 scans, um, which should be good for our sample. And you, the last thing you want to check is the receiver gain. Uh, for C13, you always want the receiver gain to be 100, which it is right now. Okay. The last thing you want to do is actually take your scan. So to do that, you want to type in ZG and hit Enter. This box will pop up, and you want to name it something that you'll remember. Once your scans are complete, a box will pop up telling you that data collection is complete, and you can hit enter. All right. The next thing you want to do is switch into nuts. So you can do that two ways. You can either hit Alt-Tab or click on the icon down here at the bottom of the screen. The next thing you want to do is open your file. When you're taking a C13 scan, the command to do that is Control-F3. So then you want to go through the list and find your file. And for the line broadening value, you want to enter 0.5. Okay. When this box pops up, you want to put what your sample is and what solvent it's in. 
and then in the user box you want to put your initials. For the C13 scan, it automatically picks your peaks for you. So all you have to do now is print it out. The command to print is PL. You want to make sure that it's landscape if this box pops up. The printers for the enema are located right next to the computer. And that's it. That's all you have to do. To take an H NMR, the first thing you want to check is that the nucleus says H1. So in our case, right now it says C13, so we're going to type in NU space H1, and that will change it to H1. The next thing you want to check is the receiver gain. Uh, the receiver gain for an H NMR spectrum can be anywhere from 1 to 100. It depends on how concentrated your sample is. So for uh, in our case, I'm going to change it to 100 for right now because I'm not sure how concentrated my sample is. So to do that, I'm typing in RG space 100, enter. And because of that, I want to make sure that I'm only going to take one scan just to test it out. So I'm going to change the number of scans to 1. So to do that, I'm going to type in NS space 1, enter. So now it'll only take one scan. To take your scan, you want to type in ZG, enter, and when the box pops up, again, name your sample as something that you'll be able to remember. So if your scan turns red, that means that re the receiver gain is too high, and that looks really high to me, so I'm going to change the receiver gain again to about 50 and see how that looks. Anytime you're saving over your old file, you want to get rid of the .h1 or .c13 at the end of it, otherwise it'll create a new file. So it's still red, so it's still too high, so let's try that again. Sometimes it takes a few tries to find the right receiver gain. Um, so, as you can see on here, uh, it took me a couple tries, but I found out that the right receiver gain is 2. Once you've found the right receiver gain, you want to go ahead and change the number of scans to the correct number you want. Um, in my case, I'm going to try 16 scans, because that usually works pretty well. Okay. And take my scan one more time. Once your NMR scan is done, you can switch over to the Nuts program. And then this time, to open your file, you want to use Control F2. Once again, when the box pops up, you want to just type in what it is and what solvent it's in and your initials. So this is what an HNMR spectrum looks like. It's a little bit different than a C13 NMR. Um, it doesn't automatically pick the peaks for you, and there are several other steps that you have to go through before you can actually print out your final spectrum. First, what you want to do is enter the zoom routine by typing in ZO, and you want to highlight a strong peak on the left side, and hit 1, and a strong peak on, a right, on the right side, and hit 2. Then you can hit Enter. Next, you want to go into the trim phase routine, which the command for that is PE. So the first peak that will pop up is the one on the left that you highlighted. You want to click your left mouse button and drag the cursor back and forth until the bottoms of the peak look pretty even. That looks pretty good to me. And the next thing you want to do is click with the right mouse button. And you want to click and hold the right mouse button this time and drag back and forth until this peak looks even. 
After that's done, you can hit enter, and now your baseline should be pretty even. The next command you want to enter is to fit the baseline, so that is FB. In this command, you want to make sure that there's a pink box anywhere there is not a peak. So you can just click to add or remove a pink box anywhere there's not a peak. Okay, and then you want to type L and hit enter. The next thing you want to do is integrate your peaks. To do this, you want to enter the integral display routine, which is ID, and you'll get your unbroken integral. If it's too big or too small, you can use the scroll bar on the left side of the screen to change it. And now what you want to do is click once to get the bar to show up, and then click once on the left side of the peak to set the left side and then click another time on the right side of the peak to show where the right side ends. You want to do that for all the peaks, except for the TMS peak. Okay? And the last thing you want to do is figure out which of your peaks should represent one hydrogen. It's usually the smallest one. And you want to click and hold the mouse on that peak and type V. And then in the current relative value box, you want to type in 1. So that'll give you your relative values for each of your integrals. Once you've done that, you can hit enter to exit out of the integral display routine. If your integrals disappear, you can hit control I to bring them back up. The next thing you want to do is pick your peaks. To automatically pick your peaks, you want to type in PP. So that should get any major peaks that are pretty tall, but it didn't get our TMS peak down here. So it's good to verify that your TMS peak is actually at 0.00. So what we're going to do is go into the manual peak picking program, which is DP. In DP, these little crop, your mouse will turn into a crosshair, and you can just click on the peak, and it'll show you where it is. If you have to manually pick any of your peaks before you exit out of the DP routine, you want to hit T to update the table that you're going to bring up. So to bring up the table, you want to hit Control B, and that'll bring up this nice little table on the side for you. If the peak labels had disappeared, to bring them back, you can hit Control p And then the last thing you want to do is print your spectrum. So just like before, you want to hit PL, and that should print it. And that's it. There are some common problems that you might run into when taking an HNMR spectrum. The first one is if your TMS peak isn't at 0, 0. So what you can do is click and hold on the TMS peak and type O. And then in the PPM box, you want to set that to 0, 0.00 and hit enter. That'll shift your entire scale over so that now TMS is at zero. The next problem that people often run into happens when integrating. Sometimes people integrate the wrong area, like too wide, for example. Um, or you just integrate a random place. So to fix that, you can go to edit, and you can either delete your last broken integral, which will get rid of the last integral you just defined. Now this one's gone. Or you can go to edit, clear all broken integrals, and just start all over again. If, you're, if you don't have your instructions for the day, or you're having trouble remembering something that you need to do, there's always this handy NMR spectrum guide that will show you all the steps that you need to take to, in order to take an NMR spectrum. This is always located near the NMR. Um, another common problem is that sometimes a peak will show up and you're not really sure what it is because you don't think it belongs to the compound you're looking at. And this chart shows you um, both where peaks from your NMR solvent will show up, so this first top line, or other solvents that could still be contaminating your sample. Once you're done taking your NMR spectra, come back over to the machine and press the eject button to eject your sample. 
Again, take the bobbin off with a Kim wipe, and then replace the water sample. And then you want to come over to the sign-in book and write the time that you were done.